He's one of the most renowned artists of our time and an activist, architect, curator, and filmmaker. But Ai Weiwei's latest documentary investigating China's handling of the coronavirus crisis has been rejected by major international film festivals. With World Health Organization officials currently in the country trying to determine the origins of the virus, he says he doesn't expect them to make any breakthroughs. In a moment, we'll hear from Ai Weiwei and why he thinks that is. But first, here's a clip from Coronation. Take a look. Ai Weiwei joins us now from Lisbon, Portugal. Mr. Ai, it's been one year since Wuhan went into the first coronavirus lockdown in the world. The WHO is now on the ground to examine the origins of the pandemic. Looking at it today, how do you view China's handling of the virus? At the very beginning, they they try to manage to sell the information and not to clearly reveal what is really going on in Wuhan. And at that time, gave the pandemic a chance to spread really very extremely broad. And uh, of course, that never uh, would be their intention, but they just underestimated the the situation. And the same as the uh, you know. WHO who did the same thing at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, trying to say the this disease is not a person to person transmittable, but uh, which is wrong. And uh, then they they locked down city, and uh, till now they still have a uh, smaller uh, cases uh, here and there. If just talk about uh, uh, as a result, uh, pretty good, you know. Uh, this uh, nation have 1.4 billion people, and most of them are uh, you know, not, uh, you know, not uh, very highly educated and uh, quite crowded uh, areas, and they manage the disease uh, still under control. And coronation, one of your latest works showing what ordinary Chinese people went through was rejected by film festivals and major streaming services. What was your reaction? I think I made the film to try to educate myself and warn the world, you know, uh, what they are facing. You know, China is not the answer for global politics and the economy. So this coronation really tells the, the, the story about China, about Chinese uh, government and the people. It's not really about the disease itself. So when they uh, trying to submit it to the existing platforms such as uh, Venice or uh, Turned Out and the New York Film Festival, and also online services such as Netflix and uh, Amazon, it all been turned down. So, you know, the, the answer is, uh, is very uh, obvious. They cannot accept uh, movies uh, in some kind of critical to the, the, the Chinese region. But my film is not really a critical. It's very uh, realistic. You know, it's very uh, factual. So I I do think this is um, uh, you can see easily this is uh, uh, China's uh, uh, big influence, uh, financial uh, or economic influence in, on the West. Not only in the entertaining industry, but even in universities or research centers. And of, of course, politically, it's obvious. Yeah, your your films really highlight what's really happening in the world today. The documentary Cockroach was filmed during the height of the Hong Kong protests. The national security law has since come into effect. Where do you see the future of Hong Kong going now? Um, I think uh, if I make this short, Hong Kong under Chinese uh, national security law has no future. Uh, China would become another place like uh, Hong Kong would be uh, um, another place like Shenzhen or Tibet or Xinjiang, you know, it's heavily controlled. Uh, of course, uh, China also need Hong Kong to 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 do business, but uh, the business will never be the same.
You tell many stories of other people through your documentaries, but we also like to hear about your own story. Can you tell us about your childhood and how you got here today? My father is a poet. He studied in Paris in 1930s, but when he went back to China, he was jailed, uh, sentenced for six years for some kind of subversive of state power. So he joined the Communist Party and uh, later they, they won the revolution and uh, they become a, he became a, a so-called people's poet or a most patriotic poet. So, but uh, very soon, uh, the same year I was born, he was criticized as the rightist, which is a purge of a half million of intellectuals from Mao's, uh, Mao's time. So I, with my father, was being sent to a very remote uh, re-education camp, not a camp at that time called a unit. So I grew up in Xinjiang. Uh, I spent about 16 years. My father spent about 21 years. And, and without even allowed him to write anything. So that's basically the background. And what do you hope people come away with after seeing your work all over the world? What is your number one goal? <laughs> I, my number one goal would be have a peaceful mind and to be uh, active in, in my mind, that, that's all. That means you have a uh, liberty uh, to express yourself and that you have a means to extend your expression, to communicate with others, and to give your personal opinions about everything. I realize without freedom of speech, we are simply not exist. Every individual uh, really become an individual through his own mind and own expression. So freedom of speech is not a choice. It's a, a, a nature of life. Could you tell us about your next project? Give us a glimpse into what you're working on now. What can we expect? Well, I uh, probably the bigger, uh, biggest project I'm doing is uh, on my memo, which uh, covers 100 years about uh, uh, the past. So that book is uh, almost finished. Uh, it's in uh, editing progress, and it's going to be come out at the end of this year. And I think you've had a, a number of challenges throughout your life. You've faced many hurdles uh, that not all of us have. What message do you have for young people or advice for young people growing up today in this world? Well, I think uh, can, uh, any young kids should stay young and uh, refu refuse to grow up. If you really have to grow up, grow up fast. All right, that's artist and activist Ai Weiwei joining us from Lisbon.